Coach, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today we've got an interesting Week 11 matchup on tap between the Dallas Cowboys and the Atlanta Falcons. That'll be taken in the end zone. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So here are the Cowboys now ready to go on offense for the first time. They'll be led out by Dak Prescott, the 135th pick of the draft back in 2016 from Mississippi State. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an Had interception. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. The numbers for Zeke from last week. 15 carries, a trip to the end zone to go along with 118 yards. Yeah, he could very well be on his way to a rushing title, but guess what? His offensive line, they're meeting separately because they want that rushing title as much as he does, and they want to make sure they get him there. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. 
They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Quick slant there. Gets him the first down. Six yards on the play. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook. But oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Prescott on first down. And he completes it to Jordan Nelson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Just the first quarter, but tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and worrying all offseason about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But I missed him. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Tyus Bowser not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. They were able to win last week despite him being sacked four times. They might need to tighten the reins a little bit or this one may not end in another victory. You're right about that. They can't count on just winning the game no matter what happens. They can't let the accumulation of hits and harassment in the pocket get to their quarterback. Got to stop that, give him clean lanes and throw the football in order to have a better chance to win again this week. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. It'll be a gain of 11, and that'll lead here to a third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, which screams what? Throw the football. you got to pass in order to try and pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That a wide open, complete. Touchdown, Cowboys. Rashard Matthews, his second touchdown on the season. And the Cowboys have taken the early lead. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Justin Tucker for the extra point. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They'll be led out by the man who proclaims to be from a whole pack of Badgers. Came into the league back in 2012, Russell Wilson. And I thought it was a really nice performance last week by him. Three touchdown passes. I think that signifies exactly what he was getting done. He did have the one interception. But that's the ratio you say you're okay with, right? If you go three to one, you're going to be pretty happy over the course of the season. And let's face it, he'll never blame the receiver publicly. But behind closed doors, he probably told his agent, hey, what's the deal? I should have had a perfect game. Dominique Rogers cromarty up to make the tackle. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they were hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They'll run it now out of the gun. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 19 carries, 91 yards. In a perfect world, they'd run the ball the same way they did last week, but against the number one rush defense in the league, they're going to have to find a different way to move the ball. Maybe they start throwing it early and come back to the run. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. 
an interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Uh, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked on in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. There's the Penn State man, it's Chris Godwin. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in the paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Here's McKissick. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. The linebacker Ryan Shazier there to make the tackle. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Off the play fake. Here's Wilson. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Two sacks last week. Another one right here. He's been unblockable lately, and I think that goes all the way back to not just his offseason, but the film study he's been doing during the week because I think he's found matchups that he likes, and he's capitalizing. And a few times, he's even defeated double teams. He doesn't care at this point. like that used to be such a big deal and now you just expect them to make it yeah you're exactly right and we shouldn't take them for granted but i have a theory about it you want to hear it yep they are more athletic now than ever before talk about kickers trace their backgrounds trace their histories you'll find that they were big time athletes all along but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists well, and now those 50 plus yarders seem easy for some reason They'll start the drive with Elliott, and he'll get this one up to the 26. And now it looks like we've got a Cowboy shaking up down there on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. A second down throw for Prescott. Oh, nearly picked. And yeah, maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. On third down, it's Prescott. Buying time to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. That's something you have to be aware of as a defense and have to find a way to account for him. And if you're not going to use a spy, you're telling your guys to keep your eyes on him because when he breaks out and makes plays like that, 
All he does is hurt you. Have to at least be able to contain him somewhat. There they could not. Prescott looks to throw on first. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Second down throw for Prescott. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Kenny McCall. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. Well, there definitely was some juice on that pass. And while tight ends don't always have the same reputation for hands as wide receivers do, in this case, that ball was expected to be caught. So out come the Falcons now. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. A carry now for McKissick. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? On third down, Wilson. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He hits his target. It's the tight end, Torlolo. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back. At the... Sitting alongside Charles Davis on Brandon Gordon as it is... Cowboy football to begin quarter number two. But they face a second and long to start things out. Prescott from the gun. And this is caught. It's Greg Olson. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. They'll try and run for it. This is use check. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. the shotgun. It's Prescott. He's going to rifle one deep. This is caught inside the 15. 
And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A gain of 32 that time. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that will drive a team towards a victory. Now a play fake here on first down. They'll buy some time right. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. Two first-half touchdown passes now for Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. He was able to move around and found some vision to throw the football. And how about how he ended it? Boy, he had some zip on that throw. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have an arm like that. Results in the touchdown here. Great play offensively. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And all he takes off with it. It's a fake. And he is not going to get in there. He stops short of the goal line, and the lead is going to stay right where it is. Okay, they went for the fake off of the, the extra point attempt. It's a long way to go, and they didn't get there. Didn't get it completed successfully. Did someone dare them to do that? Did, did, did someone double dog dare them to do that? I was going to ask you, maybe they, they saw something on film, but do you see something on film when those to try something from the 15 on a PAT? I don't know. The only thing they needed to see on film there was a snap, a hold, and someone kicking the ball through the post. What? Move the They go play action here on first down. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked by Darrell Worley. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Here we go, 46, 46. 26. Following the interception, here's Prescott. Dancing to his left. And Green with a catch left side. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. That's what we're used to seeing from him right there. Plays like that, why he's number four in the league in terms of receiving yardage. Able to make adjustments all along the way. Doesn't matter where he lines up, where he releases from. Working his way into the secondary, figures out defenses and finds weak spots in order to get open. First down, Prescott. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Ryan Kerrigan in there to get him, and that's sack number eight for him on the year. You've called plenty of games in your career. Do you believe in momentum, my man? I do, and I think we're seeing it right here. Oh, there's no doubt about it. The run that he's been on. How about that? Three sacks in a game a week ago, and another one right here. Oh, he's feeling it in a big way. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. Nine yards on the pickup, but even after that, they're left with a third and very long. Now there's a good chunk of yardage picked up there. And the big fella, sometimes he doesn't need a whole lot of space created. He can make his own way. The Cowboys on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This will be third and forever. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. Forced out to his left. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. A solid run of 11 there as he tucked it and ran, but he's still short of the marker at its fourth. Well, partner, nothing comes open here, so he decides to escape out of there, and he doesn't pick up a first down, but he does gain additional yardage to set up a possible field goal attempt if they decide to go that route. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good, and the lead stretches. 16-3 now. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. 
Here's Russell Wilson in the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to bounce that off. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Haloni Nata with a great push up front. He picks up the sack at a loss of eight. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. It's been such an impressive first half to get that lead. Now Wilson on second down. And it's brought in by Eric Decker. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his... He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked by Darrell Warren, and he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. A first down throw for Prescott. Steps away to his left. And he'll go down at the 28. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Nice job there defensively. A great time to dial up a blitz. And give him credit under center instead of throwing it away. Actually, a pretty good job of getting past the line of scrimmage, not losing yardage. Prescott now on second down. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Matthews, the intended target. That's now his second interception in as many weeks from his linebacker position. And think about all the different techniques he has to employ in a passing situation. Is he spot dropping because it's zone? Is he picking up man-to-man? -man? Is he having to run with a running back or a tight end? In any event, great eyes, head on a swivel, and excellent hands. Yeah, versatility. And got his man complete! Now he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Start. Play action. Now Wilson. Trying to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Again on second and 10, it's Wilson. He sets the fire deep. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Right there in coverage, the veteran Cam Chancellor. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. Throw right side taken in by Godwin. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And it'll be fourth down. And now here come the Cowboys. And two picks thrown here in this first half alone. We'll see how that affects him. Can't wait to see where his confidence is because the great ones... They'll throw four or five picks, and while it'll hurt their team, it won't hurt their confidence. They'll think something was just wrong with the ball or the wind or something was funny. It's never about them. That's how they stay so into the moment and into the game. And he'll power his way up near the 25. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. 
A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Second down, Prescott. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he will lose yardage on the play, back at his own 19-yard line. The Cowboys on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and 11. Here's Prescott. They'll roll him out right. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. Prescott, well, it's a shuffle pass, and it's complete. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. And again, it's Prescott. Let's it go for Nelson. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said for, and for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. It's the 2014 NFL interception leader, Glover Quinn. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. So that is three interceptions now in this first half. And you hate to ask the question, but you know, let's be honest. We're thinking about it. Do you need to go in a different direction next series? Potentially. We know that he's probably not going to be on the Pro Bowl ballot. That's not really his stature here. But he has been their starting quarterback for this game. So they've got to weigh things about who's behind him. Do they think he can snap it back into gear? Maybe change up the play calling to help him out a little bit. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Second and 10, it's Wilson again. And he will score. Touchdown, Cowboys. Well, partner, I do know this. If you're a defensive back, you have more chances to make a team now than ever because people are using five defensive back, six defensive back packages. Not exclusively, but way more than before. That was a nickel package there, and what a pickoff. Why is that? Why are they using that more? Because more people are throwing the ball on earlier downs than ever before. This has become a passing league, and because of that, more defensive backs on the field on most plays. Tucker with the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. 
It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? It creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. It's a gain of just three, and the offense likely going to yield to the punting unit here on fourth down. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he'll punt it away for the second time. So we have reached halftime here with a visiting cow. So he comes out of nowhere. He's got this handlebar mustache, greasy hair. And he says, would you rather eat a jar of mayonnaise or three sticks of butter? And I look. Well, all right, never mind. Third quarter action now. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And here now come the Falcons. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. A good pick up there, 22. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. On second down, Wilson. Steps away. There he goes again. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And the Cowboys have recovered. When I see a play like that, I come back to risk reward. I don't know about you, but is it worth it at that point, whatever you're going to pick up, to either take the hit and in this case, Lose the football. So it should have gone down. I mean, hindsight's always 20-20, but that's the safe play. You're exactly right. Hindsight's really never. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by Glover Quinn. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. But they needed a break. They needed to make a play here in the third quarter. Defensively, they did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. Taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and say, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. They'll go again with McKissick. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They go play action now. Wilson. Open man is Godwin. It's complete. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. Touchdown, Falcons. A big play there. 83 yards. And the Falcons cut into that lead. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And out now come the Cowboys. This is sort of what you would call the put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because 
What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, I think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Here go, 46. 46. Prescott on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. He got 29 yards that time. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision, and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. They've definitely established a rhythm on this drive, moving the ball quite well. And big man with football is an integral part of the whole thing. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And they'll get him down right about the 20. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. And that was a good collision right there. And I know this as a former defender. If you're playing linebacker, you're going through a checklist on every play of who you think's going to get the ball and where you think the ball's going to go. Rarely do you expect the fullback position to get it. And on that play, you did. So you've got to steal yourself at that point because the contact is going to be strong. Yeah, they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Zach Zetter, his first touchdown on the year. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. So nothing fancy there. That was just a fullback dive. Defensively, they were ready for it. They were, and I think that surprised the guys on offense because handing it to the fullback, well, you don't do that very often, so that's a tendency breaker. And I think they just wanted to say, let's just go straight ahead. As you said, nothing fancy. Everyone move someone out of the way and let the big guy work. Didn't get it done, though. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. The completion good for three, and it's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That catch puts him right at 100 yards receiving now, and it also gives him a first down. When the hitch route is run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage, and that's exactly what he got done there. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. They'll run with McKissick. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. The former Charger All-Pro, Eric Weddle, on the stop. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. 
And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up fourth. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And Charles, you'd have to think this is where you want to start taking some time off the clock. Oh, definitely, because you got the lead, right? You take a good look up there, and you say, okay, what do we need to do here? Well, you're not in full-out protect mode. You want to make sure you run it, throw it safe, take some time off, and eat it up. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Glover Quinn there on the stop. And that's why that position was created. Big, powerful, strong guy who can carry the ball and plow forward. That's exactly why you have him on the field. Play fake. Here's Prescott. Flushed out right. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, to say that this has not been his game is probably a big understatement. I mean, he is all over the place. Mechanics are off. Not accurate. Except if you're playing on defense because they picked off a good number of passes. Yeah, all the INTs, but they're throwing it off his back foot. Pressure coming, just chucking it downfield. He can't do that right now. No, you can't do that at all. And I think one of the hardest things for a guy having a day like this one is to find a way to just kind of get out of it, kind of get yourself back to neutral. Because what you try and do is make even more spectacular plays to make up for it, and it usually leads to more bad ones. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The intended target was Chris Godwin. And it's second down. And attempted a deep ball there, they didn't get it. But boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. They will run it. It's McKissick. Oh, he's got a little damage. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 17 yards on the pick up there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. Just one big carry away from busting this open, that's a good start for him. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one. Knock it away and brings up a fourth down decision. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Prescott now perfect since the second half started. 7-7. Seven seven. It's first and 10. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And that's tough duty for a strong safety because truly he's a hybrid-type player. 
a pass defender, which makes him more of a defensive back, but really his tackling ability is like a linebacker. So they don't mind coming up and taking those guys on, but that's a tough task there, taking on the big fella. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Now how about that call, handed to the big guy in that situation? Normally you think of him as a real short yardage runner, but in this case, they trust him to get a few more yards than that. I remember an old New York Giants quarterback, a Super Bowl winning quarterback, telling me he loves offense coordinators. Who call them. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Cowboys with a the football. They'll be looking to tack onto their lead as we get set for the fourth. On the run, it's Zanner. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Third and short yardage, Prescott. He may try and run for this. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into his windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. He had no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Caught by Nelson left side. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. They'll run. This is Zanner. And here he'll get it down to the seven. He gets a good chunk of yards there, eight all told. But they're still looking at a fourth down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And he's not even going to come close to picking up the first. They stop him right at the line of scrimmage. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule that if someone does it to them, you won't hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. On second down, here's Wilson. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. They're giving those short little routes, tackled him in bounds too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes. But now you've got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. To throw is Wilson. And able to find Decker. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Now Wilson on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time. And that'll bring up second down. 
another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. And they're going to try the screen. It's complete. Good contain. No gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. So unable to get any yardage at all off of the screen there on third down. And ordinarily on third down, that's when you want to bring pressure. You get all your guys who want to get after the quarterback. But how about the patience they showed? Read the play. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Dominic Rogers Cromartie. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And it looks like this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. They'll run here with Zanner. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Just a yard of the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Trying a little razzle-dazzle on third and short. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. He'll give up six yards there on the loss, and it'll bring up fourth down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Now Prescott on fourth down. Being chased out left. He can run for it, and he will. Jason Garrett might be wanting to reconsider the decision to go for it there. And it'll be a turnover on downs. So they were really trying to put the nail in the coffin there already with this lead here in the fourth, but they didn't get it. Guaranteed, it's not going to be a fun handshake in the post game, right? <laughs> you just know that there's going to be some bad blood there. And I know if we go to the post game press conferences, the, the winning coach knows he's going to say why he did it. We need the points, okay? Because you never know at the end of the year if points are going to come into the tiebreaker if we're trying to get into the playoffs. That's always the standard justification. Here's Wilson. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Now Wilson on second down. His throw incomplete. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. Here's Wilson to throw. And he will go down. A Cowboys 
sack. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. Here we go. It's Wilson on fourth down. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And it would appear the Cowboys are going to win this football game. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. On the carry, this is Zetter. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for Dallas, it's an important win in terms of staying in the postseason race as they move to 6-4. and four. And now they'll have the short week ahead as they'll host their annual Thanksgiving Day game on Thursday. Meanwhile, for the Falcons, it was a game they really needed as they dropped back to 4-6. and six. And they'll try to turn things around next week as they have a matchup in New Orleans against the Saints. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew. As this one, it don't hurt, man. I'm just in the car, man. It's like when you in the car, you just you just think about everything, man. Definitely when you like you by yourself and you just cruising on the highway, man. Yeah, this, this, this got me thinking. Uh, uh, on that cap, swerving through traffic, listening to traffic.